So I talk a lot about metabolic health and metabolic flexibility on this platform, and I love the way you describe it. So would you describe what metabolic flexibility means to you? Well, it means uh, a condition of the body where you're able to extract energy from whatever substrate is called for at the time, um, based on your having trained the body to be able to get that energy. So it means being able to burn off stored body fat in the absence of having eaten for a while. It, it's getting energy from the fat on your plate of food. It's getting energy from the glycogen in your muscles, from the glucose in your bloodstream. It's getting energy for your brain from the ketones that your liver makes in the absence of glucose. And all of it depends on your having built the metabolic machinery to be able to burn these fuels at an appropriate rate. So we can train to become very good at deriving a high level of energy from just stored body fat. Even in the last decade, uh, the, the limits have been pushed where I think some of the scientists used to think, well, the most that an endurance athlete can, can get in terms of energy uh, derived from fat versus from glycogen in a high level uh, output, maybe at, at, maybe at 80% or 85% of, of uh, total cardiac output, VO2 max, they can derive maybe 50% of their energy from fat. No, it's been shown that if you train in a keto state, if you um, if you are doing the right types of, of uh, workouts and training exercises, you can get to a point where you can be deriving 90% of your energy from fat at 85 or 90% of your uh, cardiac output. So, and I don't even think we've we've really tested the limitations of that. That's just sort of what, what the latest kind of records are showing. So the, this ability to extract energy uh, from fat when all day long. So my whole thing is like part of my metabolic flexibility involves intermittent fasting. So I don't eat for 18 hours. I, I, I wake up in the morning, I have a cup of coffee. I don't count that really. Um, have a cup of coffee. I do a workout fasted. Could be a, a quick 45 minutes in the gym. Could be an hour and a half on the bike in the heat. And then I don't eat until 1 or 1.30. Or That's my first meal of the day. Um, I don't snack in the afternoon and then I eat again at, um, at dinner. It's usually a steak and some vegetable and a glass of wine, uh, red wine. Um, and that, that, that enable throughout the day, I have all the energy I wake up and I'm not even hungry because I have the energy I need to go through the day. So like my whole thought process is why would I eat if I'm not hungry? And if I have all this energy, why am I going to eat? Um, I did a post on Twitter yesterday, just, uh, describing the fact that, um, you know, I can thrive on between 1800 and say 2300 calories a day, provided I focus on protein first, um, and then cut my keep my carbs low, but lots of vegetables, but vegetables are basically, you know, you can have a, two pounds of, uh, of broccoli has, you know, 40 grams of carbs uh, locked in a fibrous matrix. So it's tough to overdo the carbs if you're focusing on vegetables or fruit as your source of carbs. Um, so one of the things that happens with metabolic flexibility is you become metabolically efficient as well. And that's something that not a lot of people talk about and not a lot of people appreciate. Metabolic efficiency means that, first of all, if I'm consuming 2,500 calories in a day, I'm absorbing all 2,500 calories. A lot of people who eat 4,000, 4,500 calories a day are literally, because of their digestive issues, their, their gut biome or their leaky gut syndrome or whatever, they're literally pooping out a thousand calories that they would have absorbed if they had better digestion. So that's part of metabolic efficiency. The other part of metabolic efficiency is that um, I can get more work done uh, per calorie than most people who are um, they're having to make their body is overheating. It's it, they're they're trying the body's trying to burn off the extra energy that they consumed because the body says we don't need four thousand calories a day. We can handle it, but we're 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 revving high all day long, burning off this this excess energy. And that was one of the things I I, I posted the other day was look, you people who are taking thyroid medications because your thyroid is low and then eating 5,000 calories a day, what are you doing with all that extra energy? <laughs> oh, man. Um, and, you know, I got railed on by some guys who say there's no way that you can get by on, on that little food. Well, I was just at lunch with, with my writing partner, and I'm like, okay, look at this meal. This is 
uh, you know, four and a half, five ounces of salmon and a big salad. That's my lunch, first meal of the day. If it was 650 calories, I'd be surprised. Very satisfying. Tonight, I'm going to have a 10 ounce, 12 ounce steak, what call it 700 calories, some broccoli and a glass of wine. I mean, I'll, I'll get to 2300 calories today, but I don't need more. And I maintain muscle mass and I thrive. And, and my personal experiment was a couple of months ago, I said, all right, there's all this talk in the, in the, uh, uh, in the social sphere about eating three meals a day being, you know, you should do three meals a day. And, and then our, you know, our friends, um, in the medical profession, um, you know, Gabrielle is a good example saying you got to have one pound of uh, one gram of protein per pound of lean body mass. I'm like, that'll be 175 grams of protein for me. I don't ever get that amount. So I thought, you know what, I'll, I'll eat breakfast and then I'll eat lunch and then I'll eat dinner. And, you know, uh, three weeks in, my wife says, you know, you're getting a little pudgy there, Mark. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I, 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 you know, I exceeded my limits. I don't need those extra calories. And so for the longest time, I've told people, I've said, do this thought experiment for yourself. You, the old you used to go, what's the most amount of food I can eat and not gain weight? What's the most amount of this meal I can have and not feel like a glutton? What's the biggest slice of this pie I can have and still not beat myself up for having, you know, felt like uh, guilty and, and, and not be able to sleep at night? Well, that's how people go through life. Like, what's the most I can do? And most, and many people can get through life uh, not gaining much weight, but as I say, they, they, their body may be compensating by trying to burn off this extra energy. So my thought experiment was, what's the least amount of food I can eat? Maintain muscle mass, have all the energy I want, never get sick. Most importantly, not be hungry. Like, what's the least amount of that? And it turns out that for most people who try this experiment, it's probably 30% fewer calories than you thought you needed to thrive, to maintain. And again, it, for me, you know, there are days when I might get 120 grams of protein, probably not much more than that. Um, I don't, again, I don't eat a lot. I don't have big carb days and I do eat vegetables. And, you know, so um, even though I'm carnivore ish, I still maintain the, the vegetable part of what I do. Um, and I'm thriving and I'm, I, that I found my sweet spot and I never get hungry. I, I leave every meal I ever eat satiated, satisfied, not full, not over full, but, you know, ready to push the plate away and go, that was enough for this meal. I know there's more, if I ever need to eat, there's more food available around the corner. So it's not like I should overstuff myself and then plan on some famine in the future.